football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. It is Wednesday, December the 14th. It's been a while since we have done a show. So it was about time. we got a lot of news that we need to hit on. we got a lot of need, uh, things that we need to discuss, of course. Uh, before we begin anything, uh, obviously we are going to talk about Mike Leach today. Uh, we are going to talk about, uh, really, a, a lot of things. Transfer portal, recruiting, uh, hires, etc. Like, we're going to hit it all. Uh, before we do all that, Winning Cures Everything is brought to you by BetUS. That is America's favorite online sportsbook, has been since 1994. Fast payouts, incredible customer service. These guys are fantastic. Uh, highly, highly recommend that you go and check them out. There is a $50 free bet that you can get just by signing up. You don't actually have to deposit any money. They will give you $50 free dollars to play with uh, if you sign up using the link that is in the description. So go ahead and click on that and, uh, and make sure that you're signed up. Get taken care of. As, of course, you know, I host the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. I would highly recommend that you go and subscribe. There is a link in the description to go and do that. We do the YouTube show live, and then, of course, there is the podcast version as well. Um, very similar to this show, only over there we give out best bets, and we've got Parker and Kyle over there uh, talking games, breaking down games, giving out our best bets, etc. So any best bets that you will get from me, you will find over there on the BetUS College Football Show. We are heading into bowl season, so there's obviously a lot going on. The transfer portal uh, is open, and it is ridiculous. It's nuts. Um, before we talk about transfer portal, before we talk about recruiting, because National Signing Day is coming up soon, uh, we do need to talk about this. Uh, Mike Leach, the head football coach at Mississippi State, former head coach at Texas Tech, former head coach at Washington State, passed away on Monday evening, I believe it was Monday evening. It might have been Sunday night. I can't even remember at this point. It's been a, a crazy, crazy week. Uh, but he passed away at the age of 61. Uh, heart failure. Uh, had apparently been dealing with some things over the season that, you know, some people were in the know of. But for the most part, like, he just powered through it. It was what it was. And then, of course... You have this terrible, tragic news that happens on, I guess, Tuesday morning is when it was. Uh, so I talked about it a little bit on Tuesday on the Bet US show. And, you know, there were a couple of people that got mad at me, which I can understand. I don't know that there's a good way to really talk about this. And I said that I didn't really know what to say because I was still going through the fact that I can't believe that this happened, right? This is a sitting head football coach, pretty young. I mean, 61 is not old by any stretch of the imagination, especially not these days. So the fact that this happened, when we just watched him on Thanksgiving night get a win over Lane Kiffin's Ole Miss team, like, it, this is not supposed to happen. That's not the way that this is supposed to go down. And there was no real warning. It was just all of a sudden on Sunday, you hear that Mike Leach has been taken to the hospital on Monday, you hear it's not good. By Tuesday morning, you wake up and he's gone. And I don't really know how to uh, talk about that or go at that. I'm not exactly uh, a super emotional person, right? Like, there are things that will make me tear up, but they're few and far between. I do get sad. I'll admit that. I'm a little more open on this show, I think, than I am pretty much anywhere else. Uh, you're not going to see me tweeting out a bunch of stuff about it. You're not going to see... You know, I'll retweet people, etc. But hey, obviously, you know, we'll start with this. Thoughts and prayers um, to his family, uh, first and foremost. And, and then to everybody that he has met and inspired and mentored, etc. through the years. And that's not just football people. It is, I mean, the list is just a mile long of people that he has influenced. And 
had a shape in creating their career path. And this guy was unbelievable. Now, I never had the privilege of actually meeting him, but there was nobody that I wanted to watch more when those clips would come across social media than Mike Leach. I mean, it's just, just the absolute truth. There was nothing uh, that I enjoyed watching more than him. There's no other coach's press conference that could be that entertaining. And it was only entertaining because of how curious he was. Uh, this guy was obsessed with Pirates, which that's another thing that you just hate. They're going to play in the bowl game because they're playing in a football stadium that legitimately has a pirate ship in the stadium. I mean, Mike Leach would have loved that. But he was known as the pirate. He was authentic. He was original. He was the ultimate underdog. I mean, when you coach in Lubbock and Pullman and Starkville, like those are all three underdog towns. They are college towns. And there's no real built-in advantage in those places. And yet he won everywhere that he went. He was successful everywhere. I mean, you're talking about the godfather of the modern offense. So, yeah, other shows have spent entire 30 minutes on Mike Leach, etc. But, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just sad. That's basically what it is. I, I just don't know exactly what else to say other than uh, this is tragic and I never would have imagined that this is how it would have ended. I, I would have imagined that he would be out on his boat uh, before getting ready for bowl season. You know, it just, just bananas to think about. Um, so, hey, cheers, uh, cheers to the Mississippi State family um, for being, you know, so open and willing. They're going to do a memorial for Mike Leach, uh, December 20th. I believe it's Tuesday. I don't know the time currently because it was just announced as I'm, as I'm doing the show, as I'm recording. Uh, they did go ahead and name, I don't think it's official yet, but they have agreed to terms with the defensive coordinator, Zach Arnett, uh, as the new head coach. Basically to, I guess you could say, stabilize uh, the team uh, with all the madness that's going on with the transfer portal, and you've got uh, signing day coming up in, let what, two weeks, I believe, somewhere around there. Uh, you Well, I guess, no, no, not two weeks, next week. You've got National Signing Day next week. You've got a bowl game that this team will be playing in on January the 2nd in Tampa Bay. Like, you've, you've got a lot of things that, obviously, you need stability. And Zach Arnett, I believe, will be a good leader for that team. Uh, this is who the players wanted. There are some circumstances where I do not agree that the players should have a say in who gets to coach the football team. This one's a little bit different. Um, this is a guy that, that learned under Rocky Long. He brought that three, uh, that 3-3-5 defense over to Starkville. It has worked incredibly well. And this, I think this is a good hire, and it's a good time to go ahead and do it. Uh, yes, it does seem short, but you want to get these, these players deserve to have a leader, and currently, they had none. Um, so, you know, they got the uh, they got the deal done. Zach Arnett will be the new Mississippi State head football coach. He's got a four year deal. I think it's more of a prove it deal. You know, we'll we'll see what happens. But uh, there's not a lot of places where you have to replace a coach that has passed while a season is still ongoing. So that is uh, just a an absolute shame. Uh, but I mean. I think this is the best that you could do for right now. Like, I, you don't have an AD. You don't have a head coach now. I think I think you owe it to these players to go on and get this done. So, cheers to Zach Arnett. Uh, I think he's going to do just fine. It's going to be an interesting bowl game, for sure. Let's uh, let's move off of that. Let's let's put on some tunes and kind of change the, uh, the tone of the show, I guess you could say. So... We'll change up the tone just a little bit and see what we got. Auburn. Auburn has hired their offensive and defensive coordinators. 
Philip Montgomery hired as the new OC. So that is, uh, that's interesting, right? Um, Philip Montgomery was the Tulsa head coach. And for a few years there, you know, he was brought in. He was part of that Art Bryles uh, offense, et cetera, at Baylor way back when. I think he's been at Tulsa since like 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. He had a high-flying offense early on. And then his team became much more defensive-oriented. Joe Gillespie and what he did for that team really saved Montgomery's job back in, like, 2019. Like, Joe Gillespie was a phenomenal uh, developer of defensive talent. And now, Philip Montgomery, who, you know, kind of revitalized the offense a little bit. That's how they were able to, how they were able to win some games this year. Uh I think this will be good. Now, Philip Montgomery is going to come in, and he's going to run Hugh Freeze's offense. I'm very curious if he's going to call plays because uh, they did not announce that. Uh, I would imagine Hugh Freeze still calls plays, but Philip Montgomery will help. Obviously, he's going to be the quarterback's coach as well. Uh, on the defensive side, they hired in defensive coordinator Ron Roberts, who was just released from Baylor uh, two weeks ago, I guess, like right after the regular season. Uh, Dave Aranda let him go. Now, Ron Roberts has been all kinds of places. Uh, this one was a, sur- a very interesting hire to me. Um, I don't know how inspired this hire is. I don't know that this uh, strikes fear into anybody. I don't know that this is somebody that's going to go out and hit the recruiting trail hard. I, I think he's I think he's an okay coach. Um, but this is interesting, right? You're bringing in a D.C., that coached under another DC. So we'll see. We'll see what this looks like. But Ron Roberts coming in uh, after he was just fired at Baylor, that is uh, certainly a weird one. Certainly a a weird spot. So Phil Montgomery, Ron Roberts, uh, the coaching staff for Hugh Freeze has not exactly been, I guess we'll say inspired. I will say that. I don't know that a lot of people are really um, impressed by what they're doing right now. But, eh, we'll see. We'll see what uh, what it all ends up looking like. Navy has fired... Well, they did it over the weekend. It's been a little while. <laughs> but they, uh, they have fired Ken Neomatalola. And they did it in the locker room immediately after the Auburn game. Now... I think that we all got the sense over the past couple of years that Gladchuck really wanted to do this, right? Jet Gladchuck uh, was wanting to get to a point where he could start fresh. I don't know who you're going to bring in that's going to do better than Ken Neomatalola, right? Like, since COVID, it, they haven't quite been able to figure out the formula to make... They're still highly competitive, but they just can't seem to get over that hump to get back to where they were when they were winning 11 games just, what, four years ago or right before COVID hit? Like, that's, it's a weird spot. The thing that really surprises me about this is when he was asked about it, uh, Jack Gladchuk said that the next head coach is going to run the triple option. Why would you pigeonhole yourself that way? I mean, that makes no sense. So I, I don't really understand what he's trying to accomplish, what he's trying to do. Because if you're going to fire a guy that's been running this offense for years, who are you going to get to come in and do it better? I mean, it's a great question. Unless you're going to go and hire uh, the Army head coach. I doubt that's going to happen. Maybe maybe they try after Troy Calhoun. I don't think Troy Calhoun's going to go for that job. Like It's, it's just absurd. Uh, I don't know. It's, I, I'm not saying that it wasn't time for a fresh voice. What I'm saying is don't fire this guy and then say that the next guy has to run the exact same thing. Right? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So, regardless, Navy looking for a new football coach. We will see what they end up doing with that. Purdue has hired Illinois defensive coordinator Ryan Walters as their new head coach. And this one... Surprised me. I do think that this is a very good hire. However, I'm a little shocked that they didn't go to offense again. 
The two most successful coaches they've had, you know, Tiller and Brom, were both offensive guys. It, that was a way to bring in fans, to get people excited, because you know you're not going to win a lot of games. I mean, we, we understand that. that. Purdue has their pecking order in the Big Ten. What you could do is always put an entertaining product on the field. Throw the ball around, have some explosive athletes, do something fun, interesting. Every now and then you beat a team like Ohio State. It just totally uh, rejuvenates the fan base. Everybody gets excited. Uh, what Jeff Brown was able to do there was very, very impressive. Ryan Walters comes in. He's a defensive guy. And he is fantastic at defense. Absolutely fantastic. I'm real curious what he's going to do for an offensive coordinator. I think that is the biggest part of this hire, is making sure that you get somebody in there that can run that offense. Now, I'm I'm sure he will get somebody that is qualified. But it becomes very, very important for him to hit the OC, right? Because I don't know... I don't know how you're going to be able to uh, get the kind of guys in there to have a, a great defense at Purdue. They just never really have, right? They've got some good dudes on the roster right now, obviously. Brad Lambert was able to do fun things with them last year. Uh, but regardless, you, you still just had to have a pretty good defense so that the offense could score enough points to win, right? I mean, that's, that's the way it goes. So uh, I do like Walters. I do think he is highly qualified for this job. I think he is going to be a dynamic recruiter uh, at that level. It, obviously, they will never be in the you know top 10 level. But I do think it's a good hire. Schematically, this guy knows what he's doing on defense. His defenses have been absolutely awesome. Uh, they kind of do the, the positionless thing. They're aggressive without being overly aggressive. It's... This is a fun, fun scheme that he runs. I'm excited uh, to see what he does at Purdue uh, because I do think that he is a a fascinating, good, good hire, but I am wanting to see what he does on the offense. That's what I want to see. Nobody's seen that yet, what his, uh, what his offensive philosophy is going to be. Uh, who he brings in is, I think, going to tell us a lot. All right, let's, uh, let's move out of here. Let's go on and hit an ad, and then I've got quite a bit more to hit on. So hopefully, hopefully you guys will stick around with us. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back, and Bet US TV has you covered. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff, only on the Bet US TV College Football Channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit betustv.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports Show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right, let me go on and remind everybody, if you would so kindly, go ahead and hit that like button for us and hit the subscribe button here at Winning Cures. Everything, that stuff helps us out tremendously. And, uh, and if you would share out the show, that would certainly be helpful as well. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. It's on all your favorite podcast apps. Leave a nice five-star review, etc. Again, share out the show. Uh, let me tell you about Valtimary Surf Company. These guys have a college town apparel line that is Awesome. They've got some great designs. There is a link in the description that you can click, but it goes to valtimarysurfco.com. Highly, highly recommend it. These guys are awesome. Uh, go and check them out, valtimarysurfco.com. Use the promo code GARY10, G-A-R-Y-1-0, to get 10% off of your order. So go ahead and check those guys out. Now, let's start the music back up. There is Momentum for Oklahoma and Texas to join the SEC a year early. 
Now, this is from Brett McMurphy at the Action Network. Uh, he said there's growing sentiment and momentum. Uh, the Big 12's current grant of rights expires July 1st, 2025. Oklahoma and Texas have indicated they are committed to remaining in, uh, in the Big 12 until then uh, before moving to the SEC for the 2025 season. However, that has since been accelerated and could get completed by next month, sources have told him. Um, this is this is interesting. Uh, the Big 12 decided to add four teams in 2023, even before, while OU and UT remained in the league, the Big 12 is securing its new media rights deal. Uh, the Big 10 is now growing to 16 teams in 2024. Uh, the college football playoffs expansion to 12 teams is going to be in 2024. So getting that done early does make a lot of sense. Uh, it says, while both schools have publicly said that they would remain with the Big 12 through the current grant of rights, it's no secret that they want out early. Uh, and the SEC would also prefer to do that because that's when their new TV deal starts as well. So, what they're basically looking for is a way to appease not only uh, Oklahoma and Texas and the Big 12, but appease the net, the, the television partners, right? ESPN, like it obviously is going to make a whole lot of sense for them because they own the SEC. So, how could ESPN make it up to Fox? Well, at this point, I think we're beginning to look at maybe trading some playoff games since ESPN owns the rights to all of them. You trade some playoff games to Fox. That way you can get Fox to trade off on, you know, they can give up the rights to the Big 12, etc. Like there's there's a lot of ways that you can get around this to make it worth everybody's while. And that's what we're looking for here. And just make it worth everybody's while. So I, I think it makes sense. Um, you get a new grant of rights started earlier. If you're the Big 12 with all of your new 14 members, um, BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, UCF, and then all of the other ones that are remaining, uh, this is this is weird. Or not 14, excuse me, 12 members, right? You bring in four more, you got eight that are remaining. This is going to be interesting. I want to see how this goes, but if they can get this done in the next month, uh, then you know that there's been some backroom dealings between Fox and ESPN to make sure that everybody gets a piece of the pie. And it makes sense. You know, ESPN, while they might want all of those playoff games, they certainly, uh, while they have the rights to them, they may not be able to afford all of them. So, just tossing it out there. Kentucky, it appears, is set to hire Liam Cohen as their new offensive coordinator. Now, what is weird to me about this is the fact that it is not done yet, and yet it continues to be rumored is Cohen just going to wait until the end of the season with the Rams to get this done? Uh, I, I haven't quite figured that part out yet because, uh, and I'm looking to make sure that there's no more updates um, so far, but I, I, can't, I can't really understand why. Um, you know, I, I think that Liam Cohen, uh, maybe it has been announced. No. No, 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 no. Liam Cohen is still the offensive coordinator for the Rams. Like, now, Chris Mortensen said on December 9th uh, that Liam Cohen assisted in Baker Mayfield's rushed prep for the Thursday night football uh, dramatics last week, uh, but he is headed back to Kentucky football as OC, uh, which is a job he had in 2021. It says Kentucky fans can relax. But I don't know. Like, it just it hasn't been announced from uh, Kentucky yet. Like, that's the crazy thing. So, I, you know, either Mort knows what's going on or he doesn't. And that's where it gets a little, a little tricky, right? So, Liam Cohen doesn't have... Yeah, he doesn't have anything posted about it. Although he is retweeting uh, Will Levis and stuff like that. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, he doesn't do a whole lot on Twitter, obviously. But uh, I do think that's a good hire for Kentucky to bring back. They were incredibly successful uh, with Mike Stoops and Liam Cohen doing this thing. I, I'm waiting to see that this becomes official uh, because I feel like people have had the rug pulled out from under them before. Talking recruiting. Five-star edge rusher Keon Keeley committed to Alabama. 
just the other day, and I believe it was on Monday. Haven't gotten a chance to hit on it yet, but this is a massive deal. It pretty much guarantees Alabama is going to end up with the number one recruiting class in the country. He was formerly or formerly committed to Notre Dame, and it gives Alabama their 10th number one recruiting class under Nick Saban. They're still in on guys like defensive lineman James Smith, who is the number 18 overall player at 247, edge rusher uh, Quay Rousseau, number 22 overall player at 247, the cornerback Desmond Ricks, who a lot of people seem to think is trending LSU. Uh, he was just on campus in Tuscaloosa last week. Uh, Alabama is, is going to be fine recruiting-wise, right? What I think everybody's interested in, what you really need to pay attention to is – the day after signing day, or maybe the week after Christmas. Uh, how many assistant coaches are going to be gone? Because they haven't announced that any of them are gone. Charles Kelly's going to Colorado. But, I mean, this is this is going to be interesting to see what they end up doing there. Uh, number three overall JUCO player, Elijah Davis, defensive lineman from East Mississippi Community College. He, Alabama's also in on him. To me, that's the biggest thing that they need to be going after is these defensive linemen. James Smith, uh, Elijah Davis, etc. Like those guys, very, very important to what Alabama wants to do. You got to be able to stop the run. We got shirts over in the web store that say it. Run the ball, stop the run. That's still how you win football games nowadays. Just throwing it out there. So, uh, Alabama, totally fine when it comes to uh, recruiting. Still good. Still great. North Texas has hired... Let me write my time down. North Texas has hired Eric Morris, the offensive coordinator from um, Washington State. He was the former head coach at Incarnate Word. That's where my head was going with that. Uh, I think this is a good hire for North Texas. You got somebody that, under, that understands the region, that understands Texas football, that is willing to throw it around... You know, obviously, Seth Luttrell was an offensive guy, but uh, you bring in somebody like Eric Morris, who was incredibly successful at Incarnate Word. I think I think this is a great spot. You let him go up to the Power Five, be an OC. He got that experience uh, in a program like that. Come back down to North Texas, he's going to be the guy that helps lead them into the American Conference. I, I think it's a good, good move for him, for the school, you needed somebody with a little bit of life, somebody that runs an exciting style of offense. I remember he was Cam Ward's coach. He transferred. He went with Cam Ward to Pullman, Washington. So, does this mean that Cam Ward comes back? I doubt it, uh, because it, I mean he would have to be a graduate at this point. But regardless, I think that you do have some guys at North Texas that could certainly benefit from what Morris runs. Uh, and again, he's another leech guy, right? Like that's uh, that's a big thing here. Like you got another dude that kind of grew up under Mike Leach, got connections there. Dana Holgerson, I think, po uh, pointed this out. So, yeah, this is uh, this is interesting, very very interesting. So, let's uh, let's hit on a few more things and then we'll get out of here. Uh, transfer portal. Let's talk about the transfer portal. Da -da -da -da. Jaheim Bell is committed to Florida State. That is a huge pickup for Florida State. I mean, just massive. Uh, he was, in my opinion, underutilized at South Carolina. They were constantly trying to find ways to get him the ball. He's going to be incredibly dynamic in Mike Norvell's offense, I believe. Uh, Austin Reed, the quarterback at Western Kentucky, turns out he is staying at Western Kentucky. I think he got the bag. He immediately came out and announced he was going to stay by doing like an NIL thing. So I think that's good for him. That's good for Western Kentucky. Uh, Tyson Helton will be uh, good again next year. Just keep on doing this thing. Uh, Austin Reed, I think that's an interesting one because I think that Braum was really trying to get him to head over to Louisville. I think I would have really liked that, honestly, to see a guy go from Division Two up to the G5 up to... Because uh, he was at West Florida before that. So West Florida to Western Kentucky to Louisville. That would have been huge. I mean, just insane to look at to see what is possible in uh, today's football game. 
Like, it's just a, a completely different deal. Uh, but Austin Reed, congrats. That uh, That's going to be a lot of fun to see what they do, not only in the bowl game, but also next season as well. Uh, is TCU going to get JoJo Earl and Chris Marshall? Like, Sonny Dykes' offense is a lot of fun. I am shocked that they are in on that. Now, obviously, it's guys from Texas, right? Um, but this is exactly what that program needed. You got a lot of hype off this uh, playoff run. You got a lot of hype with Max Duggan going to the Heisman Trophy ceremony. Now you got dudes that want to play in this offense. I think that's huge. SMU is doing the same thing with Rhett Lashley. You got a lot of things working in their favor. Uh, but I like this. I think this is good. I think this is certainly good. Marshawn Lloyd, the running back at South Carolina, he is now in the transfer portal. That offense could not go without him. They just did not run without him at all. Now South Carolina hires a new offensive coordinator. I'm interested to see what they are going to do. That's that's what I want to know. What are they going to do? What are they going to look like? Um, I don't have an answer for that because they couldn't really get anything accomplished when Marshawn Lloyd was not playing. Like anytime he was out with an injury, this offense was putrid. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, continuing on with South Carolina, Corey Rucker. Uh, has spent most of the year injured or has had other issues going on. He was a dynamic playmaker at Arkansas State. Transferred over to South Carolina. I expected huge things out of him from from him and Juice Wells. Of course, the transfer from James Madison. Uh, Wells played really well. Rucker didn't do a whole lot. I think he can still be a huge pickup for a lot of different teams, but I am curious uh, where he's going to go. I mean, this is third transfer now. So we'll see. Uh, Grayson McCall, of course, the quarterback at Coastal Carolina. A lot of people talking about this one. I am of the belief that he is going to get the NIL bag from Liberty, and he's going to go rejoin up with Jamie Chadwell for one season before he hits the NFL. I am a little confused as to why he would not just go to the NFL, but if you can go and make, you know, a million dollars, two million dollars guaranteed playing college football, uh, at a place where you know you're going to be successful? I got no problem with it. Got no problem with it. I think this is a good deal for him. Um, obviously, not a whole lot of people saying it right now, but I just, I'm just i of the opinion that that is how this is going to go. We'll see. I mean, he's going to visit Auburn next week. So we'll see. Maybe he wants to go play for you freeze. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Let's close on this. The UC Regents situation, I was trying to record late to uh, see if we could maybe figure out something with that. Um, and nothing. nothing. Oh, uh, Kenny Burns' deal is done. He is the new head coach at Kent State. Uh, let's see. Nope, I don't see anything. I, I'm wanting to figure out this UC Regents situation. Is UCLA going to have to stay in the Pac-12? I mean, it's really funny to me that this might be even possible. Uh, but either way, we'll just have to try and talk about it next time. Next time. Let's go on and get out of here. Uh, check out Flow Sports, by the way. They help bring us the show, if, uh, or bring you the show each and every time out. Uh, flowsports.tv, they bring over 25,000 sporting matches to you. And we're talking anything from D3 football to wrestling to MMA to volleyball to baseball. I mean, just a ton of different options for things to check out on Flow Sports. There is a link in the description. Go get yourself signed up over there. Along with that, of course, let me mention again, BetUS, America's premier online sportsbook, America's favorite sportsbook since 1994. Fast payouts, incredible customer service. These guys are great. They are wonderful. Um, they've always treated me well. They will treat you well as well. So go and check them out, BetUS.com. There is a link in the description where if you sign up, no deposit required. They're going to give you $50 to play with. And obviously, rules and restrictions apply, all that kind of mess, whatever. Re read the fine print. But they're going to give you 50 bucks just to try this thing out. You don't even have to make a deposit. So what harm could it possibly do? Get yourself signed up. Go to BetUS.com. Check out the BetUS College Football Show. Obviously, that's what I host. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. So go and check them out. With that said... Wait, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, super contest picks. Man, who'd have thought that? What's our time? 34-46. Okay, look, I'm going to give you five picks. I went two and three last week. I'm 36-33 and 33 thus far on the season. 
Uh, Eagles minus 10 at the Giants. I know that the number is inflated. The more I look at this matchup, the more I like the Eagles. I think they are they're a really good football team. Dolphins plus 8.5 at the Bills. Yes, that's right. A lot of people love the Bills. Uh, a lot of people don't think Miami's built for cold weather, etc. We're trying to figure out the snow situation. It's too many points. The Bills are not great. Uh, going to be a lot of wind. Uh, Bills can't really run the ball. Give me the Dolphins plus 8.5. Falcons plus 4 at the Saints. Uh, Titans plus 3 at the Chargers. And give me the Bengals minus 4 at the Bucks. This Bucks team looks lifeless. So, with that said, again, BetUS, Flow Sports, Valtimary Surf Company, and winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe. Share the show out. Take your friends. Click that like button. I think it's time for us to get out of here. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Hopefully, hopefully, all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.